Hey, it's Sarah Bigger Stewart, founder and CEO of Clover by Cloven Hallow, and today we're going to do a next installment of Ask a Makeup Artist. This question is a little different than usual. Today's question is less about like techniques and clover and more about like the makeup artistry professional side of the industry. Um, and asking like how to get started. How did I get started? So that is what I'm going to share with you today. So for those of you who don't know, I got into the beauty industry by freelancing as a makeup artist. I grew that business pretty substantially. I worked with Delta, Coca-Cola, NBC, on TV and film sets uh, with tons of brides. And I really, really enjoyed it. But then I obviously moved over to the brand and product side when I launched Cloven Hallow initially and now Clover. So if you want to become a working makeup artist, meaning it's not a hobby, you're going to invest time and effort and resources into building a kit, being professional, getting clients, this is what you need to do. The most important thing is to build a portfolio and build experience. There simply is no substitute for getting your hands on people's faces in terms of like working with skin tones, skin types. Uh, learning to adapt to different situations and needs that are going to arise. The only way you become like very confident is by getting out there and doing it, right? And you might be thinking, duh, that is what I'm trying to do, but like, how do I go get that experience? And I'm gonna share with you how. Building a portfolio is easier than ever now with social media. So back when I got started, it was 2013, and YouTube was the big player. Instagram was picking up traction, but it hadn't like exploded yet and TikTok wasn't even around, which is a crazy concept. But with these platforms, you have the ability to reach a ton of people with content on yourself, content on a friend, content on your mother. Like you can find people to be your model, your client to demonstrate your skill and get your foot in the door for actual jobs, okay? so. It has never been easier to build a portfolio and to get hands-on experience than now. Some other really good ways to go get experience is to reach out to the big modeling agencies in your area and let them know that you're a new makeup artist. Send them your social media that has some examples of your work on yourself, your friends, your family, and let them know that you would like to um, either offer reduced rates for paid collaborations or just be added to their list of like collaborative makeup artists because what people will sometimes do in terms of agencies, photographers, models, and makeup artists, hairstylists, the whole sort of team is they will collaborate on shoots um, where nobody is paid. It's just for the exposure, if you will, um, and the ability to take the photos back and show them as part of your portfolio. This is very common and honestly modeling agencies love this because they get something really powerful out of it too by having great new images for their models. So definitely reach out to the local modeling agencies, local models, things like that. You can also reach out directly to local photographers who specialize in like the type of uh, modeling that you're interested in. There's a difference between like high fashion editorial modeling and commercial modeling. I would get up to speed on what those differences are and then reach out to the people you're interested in. A very lucrative time for me in my career was when I specialized in doing headshots. So that was very simple, predictable, like 30 minutes or less makeup. It was not a huge um, time suck on me. And it was just like a steady flow. Um, even graduation photos was a steady flow. And I found those opportunities by reaching out to photographers who specialized in those opportunities. And they would add me to their rate list or to their recommended vendor list, I should say, and give that to their clients. The other option is to reach out to makeup artists in your area who are more established than you and ask if you could assist for them. And the way that you can structure this is saying like, here's my portfolio. I can show you what I've done. I'm a new makeup artist. I want to get my, you know, hands busy and active and get experience. Can I come assist for you? And if they give you the opportunity, you have to take it and you have to be professional. So show up on time, have a clean sanitized kit, have the products and tools that you're going to need, be pleasant, all of that stuff. Um, but this can really get your foot in the door because there are shoots where there are 10 models, there are weddings where there are 10 bridesmaids and it's just not feasible for one makeup artist to tackle all of them 
in you know the two hours they've set aside for hair and makeup. In that situation, they bring on an assist. So you could be that person and you can offer your services for free at first if you would like, although I don't recommend this. I would recommend offering to assist at a extremely discounted rate. And then as your experience builds and as your relationship with that makeup artist builds, you raise your prices. And any good makeup artist who's a professional will give you your fair share of the proceeds from that job uh, as soon as you've proven that like you're a reliable makeup artist. So if it's not obvious yet, let me just address the elephant in the room. Getting started as a makeup artist is not incredibly lucrative in the beginning uh, because you have to really establish yourself first, but it can become very lucrative. So what I would recommend is if you need a certain amount of income, have your standard job, preferably something that doesn't get in the way of like normal makeup artistry schedules and don't quit that job until you have revenue coming in. Um, and that is different for everybody, like what that threshold of comfort is to quit your day job. But what you don't wanna do is be like frantic and stressed about money um, because it can just take a little bit of time to get going and then things will sort of exponentially grow. So you've got experience, you've got a portfolio, what do you do now? So if you're interested in bridal, I would recommend getting in contact with your local bridal magazines, local bridal blogs, uh, bridal expos, and really trying to like pimp yourself out, so to speak. You want to be in people's ears, you want to be in front of their eyes, you want to be front and center, so that when people are talking about uh, makeup artists, when they are publishing you know, blogs and articles about makeup artists, you're gonna be included. I would also circle back with the photographers and modeling agencies that you'd worked with previously, direct them to your upgraded portfolio and your upgraded rate sheet. In today's world, I would also take Google very seriously. So I would make sure that I had a Google presence, like as a business, when you search makeup artist in your area, I would want to come up in the Google results. I would wanna have reviews in the Google domain. Um, and that might involve having to have like a physical location, although it's not required. Um, but I think that that is a surefire way to get clients because people are Googling for information related to their wedding. So if you can get included on bloggers lists of like the top 50 makeup artists, in my case, in Atlanta, um, and then come up in the Google search results with, you know, 45 five-star reviews as an Atlantan makeup artist. Um, if you can even bid on keywords, if you build a website for yourself that is SEO optimized for Atlanta makeup artistries, again, specific to my example of being in Atlanta, um, all of these things are going to increase inbound traffic for you and credibility. And this whole time I would be working so hard on your social media to go viral on TikTok, on Instagram, um, and really like dig into showcasing your skill set. I think this is easier with bridal than anything else. And that is a good place to start if you're just looking to get your feet wet. I find that bridal makeup artistry, it's kind of easy to get bookings comparatively, and then you can transition into a different type of makeup artistry if you want. And the last option would be to get representation through like a creative agency where they are your agent on your behalf. This is not an approach I ever took personally, but I think if you wanted to be a career professional makeup artist working on some of the biggest sets, uh, then this is a pretty good step. So I hope that this was helpful if you want to hear more about things like what I would keep in my kit, uh, what to look for, sanitization practices, I'm happy to share. Let me know if you have any questions down below. Bye guys.